And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. Hello, child of God. We have the opportunity to change our own future today. Let us join in agreement in prayer and ask Almighty God to give us the gifts of discernment of spirits. We ask Almighty God to open our eyes and to teach us about the spiritual warfare. We ask Almighty God to spare us from the horrors that He is sending upon the earth in our generation, and to make us each one worthy to stand before the Son of Man. Our prayers in agreement will be a sweet incense to the throne of God. So just please repeat after me this short prayer before we continue to the video. Father God, that's right, just repeat after me. Father God, I ask you now to anoint and fill us with the Holy Spirit. Give us the gifts of discernment of spirits. Open our eyes and teach us about spiritual warfare and the spiritual kingdoms. And Father God, please spare us from the horrors that you are sending upon the earth in our generation. We all agree, as in touching, in the name and to the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Around the year 8096, the Apostle John was raptured up to heaven before the throne of the eternal God. From John's location in eternity, which is outside of time, the angels revealed what was to happen in John's future. That is, the time after AD 96. Some of the things revealed really happened in eternity outside of time. Some of the things happened in the spiritual realm within time itself. Some of the things happened on earth in the earthly physical realm. And some events happened in the spiritual realm under the earth and on earth. And some events reoccur in cycles from time to time. The revelations are so complex and disturbing that many Bible scholars spend their lives studying end time Bible prophecies, but rarely agree on what the passages really mean. Pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, mid-millennium, post-millennium, and so on. But when you cook it all down, the Apostle John himself was just as confused and overwhelmed with the revelations as we are. He fell down on his knees to worship an angel. All of mankind is normally spiritually blind. The knowledge and understanding of spiritual things comes as a gift from the Holy Spirit because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we pray that Almighty God will open our eyes and give us discernment of spiritual things. It is an unearned and undeserved deserved gift from the Holy Spirit. The seals have been broken and the scroll has been read in eternity, which is outside of time. But we happen to live just a generation at one time. So there are many portions of the revelation that are not relative to our generation. For example, by the time Satan is released from the bottomless pit, I will have been dead for at least a thousand years. There seems to be reoccurring events, like the five horsemen that travel around the earth and destroy mankind in cycles such as the rise of incredibly horrible tyrants, war, famine, death, and hell. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. At this point, I need to sum up the hundreds of end-time scriptures, historical confirmations of fulfilled prophecies, and jump along to Almighty God's end game. 
We know a small portion of Almighty God's plan and purpose for sending these spirits, so I'd like to review a few. First, destroy the wicked from the face of the earth. Mankind will almost totally be exterminated during these next few years. Just read the book of Revelation. Second, force the return of the Jews to Israel. There's hundreds of scriptural references on that. Third, send the Holy Spirit to Ezekiel's temple in Jerusalem to prepare the Israeli Jews for the Messiah. Most of that is covered in Ezekiel's chapter 38 through 44. Fourth, send the Lord Jesus Christ to Israel to rule the planet. That's all over the Bible. You have seen the path these spirits are taking to accomplish God's first purpose, and that is exterminating the evil mankind from the earth, leaving only a remnant, where the caliphate will be destroyed when someone destroys Babylon with a nuclear bomb. Let's look at the second purpose, bringing the world's Jews back to Israel, based on the evidence of the signs of the times in the scriptures. We will probably see the collapse of the U.S. economy on on or before the 13th of September 2015, the 29th of Elul 2015. Following the collapse of the U.S. economy will be the collapse of the world economy and then a worldwide depression. The ruling spirits will again blame the Jews in the world and drive them out of their countries. There may be also masses of Jews trying to escape the dirty bombs set off in New York City, New York State, and other places outside of Israel with high concentrations of Jews. In all my God will make Israel the safest place on earth for the Jews. This is a scale map of the state of New York and the nation of Israel. We can question now, how does Almighty God drive the Jews that are sitting fat, dumb, and happy in some of the richest people in the entire world in New York State and the surrounding states? What can happen? What can be done? Dirty bombs, gas, disease, the government turns against them. There are many things that can happen, many ways these spirits can turn the hearts of Americans against against the Jews and the hearts of the Jews to leave the United States and Canada and the friendly nations of the world and return to Israel where Almighty God wants them. Moving on to the third purpose, Almighty God will force Russia to lead Iran and many other Muslim nations to attack Israel and then he will save Israel by destroying Gog and Magog with an earthquake, fire, brimstone, hail, knock the missiles out of the air and so on, which is explained in Ezekiel 38, 39, and 40 as the Gog and Magog War. Israel would then have seven years of peace to make it a national priority to bury the dead, to clean up, to build Ezekiel's temple, and then to receive the Holy Spirit into Ezekiel's temple. So, child of God, what about us? We who live on this planet today. Currently, we are in the time of the sign of the four blood red moons. The spirit of war began destroying governments in the Middle East around December 2009. This was called the Arab Spring. Historically speaking, all of the Arab Spring nations, whether Shia or Sunni dominated governments, sent terrorists, money, and weapons to support the ongoing terrorism against Israel. Syria is probably the most notorious for exporting terrorism to Israel with the sponsorship of Iran. But now the spirit of war has been destroying Syria from the inside since early spring 2011. The Syrian government is a puppet of both Iran and Russia. The Syrian civil war pitted the Syrian army with the assistance of the Iranian special forces against the free Syrian army and the Islamic front. In 2013, Hezbollah Another terrorist group entered the war in support of the Syrian army. Hezbollah is an Iranian-sponsored terrorist group whose main purpose is to make war with and destroy Israel. Then Syria was attacked from the east by ISIS, now called the Islamic State. Initially, ISIS was linked to Al-Qaeda in Iraq, but now ISIS has become a dragon on its own with a plan to rule the earth. ISIS made rapid military gains in both Syria and Iraq, eventually conflicting with the Syrian army and other rebel groups. In August of 2014, ISIS controlled more than a third of Syria's territory and most of its oil and gas production, thus establishing itself as a major opposition army. The Syrian government is still upheld by the support from Russia and Iran, while Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and the United States transferred weapons to the rebels. The U.S., the U.K., 
the European and Arab states have declared a readiness to support the mainstream Syrian opposition. These nations are sending weapons and support to ISIS in Syria to help ISIS fight against the Syrian government and then send weapons and support to the Kurds in Iraq to fight against ISIS in Iraq. This has obviously involved into one of the largest and complex proxy wars in history. The death toll in Syria has passed 200,000. Chemical weapons have been used many times. More than 3 million Syrians fled the country and became refugees and millions more were left in poor living conditions with shortage of food and drinking water. In Syria, the Assad family comes from the minority Alawite religious group, an offshoot of the Shiite Islam religious sect. That comprises of an estimated 12% of the total Syrian population. On the other hand, Sunni Islam makes up three quarters of Syria's population, and almost everyone else left in Syria is being massacred by the opposing religious factions. ISIS did not really begin in Iraq. ISIS began in Turkey among the Sunni Muslims and with the full knowledge of Turkey's military. Turkey supported ISIS and encouraged them to fight a secret war against the Turkish Kurds on the border of Turkey. Then, with the cooperation of several NATO and Arab nations, Turkey encouraged this infant ISIS to join in the battle against Syria. Turkey's president in Dorgan is one of the most important and dangerous allies of the caliphate and the Islamic State. The world is witnessing a genocide of Christians that will surpass the Turkish slaughter of the two million Armenian Christians, 1915 to 1918. Turkey has nuclear weapons and is a NATO country with access to all of NATO's modern missiles and NATO's intelligence weapons. President Endorgan's foreign policy vision is neo-Ottomanism. That is the policy of the Turkish Empire building and conquering of the lands formerly ruled by the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire existed simultaneously on earth with several other empires, and the Turks often made religious wars exterminate Christians, Jews, and other minorities. There is not enough time to explain the, the rise and fall of the Ottoman Empire. So pray that our eyes will be open as I play a short portion of Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This is correct, child of God. Once again, the dragon is raising one of its heads with a great power given by Satan himself to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Our question is now should not only be why does Almighty God allow the massacre of the righteous, but we should also ask why does Almighty God give authority to these ruling spirits to destroy so much of mankind? And why does Almighty God authorize these murder cycles over and over and over again? Yes, we could give this spooky spiritual answer and say, well, God's ways and thoughts are higher than ours. Like the heaven is above the earth, our God's ways and thoughts are higher than ours. Yeah, this statement is very true, but it also leaves us very hungry for the answers here on earth. All of these questions also have been asked in heaven above. So we should all make a quick prayer that the Holy Spirit would teach us the answers and open our eyes as I play a few verses concerning these issues. 
He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Child of God, every generation since the crucifixion has had some sort of tribulation period. Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, is testing all of mankind. Every generation, every church, every religion is being tested. The ultimate test of our faith is how much suffering we will endure and retain our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. However, there is a major difference in this cycle of tribulation, and that is Israel. Almighty God's chosen people have been restored as a nation since May the 15th, 1948. Eventually, this mini Muhammad, the Antichrist ISIS Caliphate, will cut across Syria and attack Israel. This is the time that the angel spoke to Daniel about. The time when Michael the Arch angel will stand up for Israel and fight against the dragon that has been empowered by Satan. Michael and his angels will prevent the Islamic State from exterminating the Jewish people. However, many Jews all over the world have been marked for death. It is my own opinion that in roughly 42 months from June of 2014 that the ISIS Caliphate will be dead and his armies destroyed and in hiding. The Caliphate will live in a palace in Babylon and will be destroyed when someone destroys Babylon with a nuclear weapon. Michael and his angels will still be in Israel and ready to stand up and fight when the Gog and Magog war breaks out. Almighty God will send a world-shaken earthquake to destroy the infrastructure of every nation in the world. And Almighty God will defeat Russia and Russia's Muslim allies on the mountains of Israel. He will send the earthquake, of course. He will send fire and brimstone. He will send fire into Russia and the nations all along the Mediterranean that fought against Israel. He will send fire and burn them up. Then Almighty God will use that war to shake up Israeli people and bring revival to them to acknowledge that He alone is the one that saved them. The earthquake will clean the Temple Mount all the way down to the bedrock and Israel will have a national agenda and seven years of peace to rebuild the Temple and invite the Holy Spirit into the Temple. It is also my opinion that the spirit of famine, the spirit on the black horse, will ride through one-fourth of the world and which is most likely the Americas for seven years with seven years of famine. I thank Almighty God that these are just educated guesses, and I hope above hope that I'm wrong, but I'm also praying to be spared from this coming tribulation, and most of all to be found worthy to stand before the Son of Man. God bless you, child of God. Thanks for watching.